So in the last experiment, we were looking at growing different microbes on agar plates, and we looked at the different places that we can get the microbes from and which areas were the most dirty and caused the most growth. And in this experiment, we're going to be looking at what things can stop the growth of bacteria and fungi and other microbes. So in this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to be testing four different materials to see if they reduce bacterial growth. So the first thing we're going to test is we're going to use some hand soap. The second thing we're going to try is vinegar. And vinegar is a strong acid. So um, see how that impacts them. The third thing we're going to use is some salt. So salt is traditionally added to foods um, in part because it dries the foods out. It takes away some of the moisture. And then the last thing that we're going to try is bleach. Really, really powerful cleaner. So to test these things on microbe growth, what we're going to do is we're going to first of all need one plate for each of our four different materials. And on that plate, I'm going to spread out, just using a similar technique to last time, I'm going to spread out some bacteria. And I've got a little bottle uh, here, and in that bottle is a liquid culture of bacteria. So I'm going to use one of our little um, cotton buds to soak, to get soak up some of that bacteria, and then to spread it out onto the plates just like we saw last time. Okay, so that's step one. Okay, so I've now produced my four plates. So they've all had bacteria spread out on them just like we did last time. Hopefully there'll be quite a lot of growth on these because we know that this is a, a solution of bacteria and it's not just taking it from somewhere in the room where we don't really know what's there. So the next step is in each of these plates, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to cut into the jelly using a cork borer to take out some little wells within the plate. And then we're gonna fill those wells with our different test solutions, okay? So, to do that, we're gonna use this little thing here. It's called a cork water. So, I'll show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put two wells into the plate. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we are gonna to need to take the jelly out. Okay, and we just use a little pair of forceps. Okay, so there's one. And there's two. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our test sample in there. Okay, it's gonna be a fairly small amount because it's quite a small well. And I'm just gonna use a little dropper to add that in. So I'm gonna start off with the vinegar. So I'm using a little dropper just to soak up some vinegar and then I'm going to add the vinegar into the little wells. I'm being very, very careful not to overflow it, so it's not going to need very much. Okay, and then second one. Okay, so we're getting about two drops in there. Very gently popping that there and then we're going to incubate that for two days and we're going to see if there's any areas around that well where bacteria haven't been able to grow because they've been inhibited by the vinegar but we're going to need to leave that just for that vinegar to soak into the jelly and then I'll move it up to the incubator so I'm now going to do the same thing for our other liquid um, samples so we've got our soap and we've got our bleach so i'm going to do the exact same thing with them but then i'm going to, have to take a slightly different approach with the salt because it's not a liquid okay
So with the salt, all I'm going to do is I'm going to place a small lump of salt into the middle of the plate. So I've actually done two just to keep it consistent because we've had two wells uh, for the liquid. So I've done two little lumps of salt. And that is it. So the next step is that the plates will now be put into an incubator. So I'm going to need to put the orange tape around the plates to seal them, just like we did the last time. And I'm going to have to just write on the lid of the plate what is actually in it. And then these will get incubated for two days. I'm going to have a wee look at the plates and see how they've changed. So it's now been 48 hours since we incubated the plates with our bacteria from that bottle of liquid. We streaked them onto the plates and then we put our wells in and in the wells we added our test substance. When we had vinegar, we had bleach and we had soap. And then the last one, salt, we just put the salt on top of the agar. Um, and what's happened is the bacteria have grown and around those wells, around the area where we put our test substance, there are clear zones where nothing has grown. So let's have a little look at each of these plates um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to measure the area where nothing is grown, but we're also going to measure the complete area of the petri dish um, to see how much bacteria has grown. So we'll start off with the soap and you can see that where the bacteria has grown we have got this kind of cream colour where my finger is just behind there. But around the wells we've also got these areas where bacteria haven't been able to grow. That's a, a zone of inhibition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to measure the radius of that circle, that clear zone. Uh, and I'm going to use... A maths technique, we're going to use pi r squared, we can work out the area of that clear zone at the top and the one at the bottom and we can add them together and that would be the total area of the plate where nothing could grow. But we also have to use pi r squared to work out the total area of the petri dish and then we can work out how much the whole petri dish, uh, the area of the whole petri dish where the bacteria is growing and we can take away the clear zone and work out what's left. Okay, so I will do that. I'll measure them um, and I will put the results up in a table. So that is the soap. If we have a look at the vinegar, we can see that there isn't really much in the way of clear zones here. There is one clear zone up at the top, which I'll be able to measure. You can see that one. But at the bottom, there hasn't really been much there. Okay, so I would say that that's been less effective than the soap at inhibiting bacterial growth. And then if we have a look at our, um, what is this one? This is our salt. So the salt has had some success as well. We can see um, clear zones there. I'll try and get a good angle for you. There you go. So you can see that there are clear zones um, around the areas where the salt was placed. Um, I'll take a photo of that and uh, put that up so you can see that a little bit better. But the last one was the bleach which has done a, a pretty incredible job because nothing has grown at all. There is no bacteria growing at all on this plate. That might be easier if we compare it to um, another one. So put these on the floor, it's a little bit easier. Look at the color difference there. So you can see we've got that kind of creamy color around the plate where bacteria has been growing. And this one is, is light in color. There is not that cream effect because the bacteria has not been able to grow. So in fact, the bleach has been completely successful at inhibiting growth across the entire plate. So just like the last lab report, you're going to have to now write this up. So think about the aim of the experiment. What were we trying to find out in this? Think about the variables. So what was the thing that we changed in each plate? 
that's our independent variable. What did we measure to get our results? That's the dependent variable. And what variables would we have had to keep the same for each of these plates? That would be our controlled variables. For the results, you are going to have to work out what was the percentage area of inhibition? What was the percentage area of this plate that didn't have bacteria growing on that? And you'll be able to get that, work that out using the information that's in the results table for you. And then we should also be able to do a bar graph for these results and then a conclusion and an evaluation. Again, if you're having any difficulty doing the write-up, get in touch with your class teacher and they'll be able to give you some pointers.